Um, and there is an overview again of the different stages um, in the operation of division. Uh, you've got the concept of sharing that, that Jill mentioned earlier that she covers with earlier's foundation stage uh, and grouping uh, which Mr. Gota would sort of move on to in key, and Ms. Fair has moved on to into, in key stage one and it sort of finally ends up in the concept of uh, chunking, the chunking method of division. Again, this, is, this sort of type of concept is probably not is something that lots of parents aren't familiar with, um, because, but it's based on the concept of division being repeated subtraction as multiplication is repeated addition. And the children would have had a lot of practical experience in starting off with a larger number of objects or items and for example, if they're going to be divided by three, they would end up sharing them between three. And then the concept of taking away three, taking away three, taking away three would eventually lead on to the concept of uh, chunking um, uh, and taking away larger chunks of numbers. So, just starting in year three, so just started yeah. this stage in the year three looking. Yeah, so it's, it's based on the, their understanding of what division is and the fact that you are starting with your larger number of, as I said, items or objects and you're taking three away, taking three away, taking three away. But obviously that's going to take you a long time if you're working with large numbers, if you divide them by three. So to speed the process up, you would then start to take away ten lots of three and then ten lots of three. So that's the basis of the understanding of division. Okay. Yeah. Right, so we initially start with division um, looking at, as Mrs. Thomas said, sharing between, and that's the way that I encourage my children to look at the symbol of the dividing sign. It's six shared between three. And we would literally practically look at using objects, multivalent counters, however it may be, to share the objects out so we can work out how, how much each person would have and making sure that each set initially would be equal. We wouldn't look at remainders. They would always have exact numbers where they could share the numbers out. From then, we would then look at using the number line uh, and taking away. So relating it back to our multiplication, we knew that multiplication was repeated addition. We can now look at it as repeated subtraction and making sure that each group has, its same, has the same amount. We would take away a certain number each time. We would put the objects into groups. Um, and it would be very, very practical. They would still record the number sentence, but again, they would work it out very, very practical, whether it be through drawing pictures, using equipment, or using the number line to work out where they would go from there. We would, we would look also at the links between division and subtraction as we would, would with multiplication and addition. So with multiplication, we know that the number would, would get, generally would get bigger if you multiply two numbers together, as it would with addition. And with subtraction and division, the number would, the answer should be smaller. So again, as Mrs. Thomas said, they can look to see, is their answer a sensible answer? Have they, you know, very, very quickly they can have a look. If their number's bigger, they can say, well, I don't think I've done that right. Maybe I've multiplied my numbers rather than dividing them. So again, using the facts, number facts that they know to help them with, with division, subtraction, addition, and multiplication. Okay, the interim method again, before we move on to the more standard method um, for division, um, we tend to call chunking, uh, which, as I said, is based on the concept of division being repeated subtraction. And um, I know how I, I teach that um, in a humorous way. And we might start off with a number like 96 or maybe 196 divided by 5. And we might have 5 people and start to take away 5. Or start to take away 5. Start to take away 5. And we talk about what's the problem with that method. And hopefully the children come up with the idea that it, you're going to end up with a very, very, very long calculation, and you're also it's going to take you a very, very long time to do it. And that sort of, that sort of idea moves on to the concept of beginning to chunk away in larger multiples of the number. So, for example, um, 96 divided by 5, the children would m be moving on to larger numbers such as this, and they were using that concept of... Um, being efficient and taking away individual multiples of a number, taking a long time and, and being taking a long 
uh, space on your page. They've chunked away ten lots of five, um, and then look at the number and say, right, well, I can take away another five lots of five. And that uh, information in brackets would actually be recorded alongside their calculation in their maths book so that they, they are showing that they're understanding the concept of chunking in larger multiples. Uh, they would be encouraged to recall uh, their five times table, any number facts they can create from their five times table. So as you can see, if a child doesn't have um, a secure knowledge of their times tables by the time they move on to uh, this method, they're unable to, to move on to the more formal method of, or even this interim method of recording. Because if you don't know that two lot, one five is five or two lots of five are ten, and you're not going to be able to work with larger multiples of that number. Um, so you can see the logical process of division there being repeated subtraction. And from there, the children then move on to uh, the more standard method that you or I might remember from school days uh, that we called long division. Um, but it's certainly years five and year six know why it's called long division if they're taught it uh, the silly way, if you like, by take, repeatedly taking away individual multiples for number taken forever and filling up a page in their maths book, they soon realise that the logic um, of having to move on to repeated chunking and again onto this um, more formal method where children aren't recording alongside each subtraction how many multiples of a number they're taking away. The, they only move on to this method if they know what they're doing and they know that they can take away the biggest chunk, chunk of a number that they can come up with in their head. Um, they are encouraged to do lots of jotting um, alongside uh, a long division, because obviously they don't know their 24 times table or their se or 17 times table or 13 times table, so they would be encouraged to uh, make jottings to calculate um, the biggest number of that multiple that they can take away. And you would, if I saw that calculation in year six in a maths book, alongside that, there would be little sketchings of probably children using the grid method. Uh, so 24 times seven or 24 times eight, and they're working out what the biggest multiple of that number is that they can subtract from the original number. So it's sort of all interlinked, but again, to, to undertake um, the more formal recorded methods of multiplication and division, the children need to know their tables. Those that don't, um, in lessons, will probably have a times tables fact sheet uh, with them to enable them to be successful um, in the understanding of the operation. However, such a, a resource is not permitted in any form of exam or test. So although the children might understand the concept of the formal methods of multiplying and dividing in the lessons, and the children, the teacher might feel that that child is secure with their understanding of what they're doing. If they don't know their tables, they would be unable, probably, to get the answer right in any form of test because they don't have the, the support of a times tables fact sheet there. Okay. And again, as I mentioned earlier, they would be encouraged to look at the answer is it a sensible answer? And possibly as well to estimate a rough idea and give, come up with a rough idea as to what the answer might be or might be near to. Because by the time a child would be, under, uh, be able to undertake such an operation, they would have quite a secure understanding of number in general. And year six do work with uh, that method with, uh, with decimal numbers as well. They might work with... 246.72 divided by uh, tens of units. So the understanding of division being repeated subtraction and chunking um, enables them to undertake any division, really. Um, paper A, they would have to, in the SATs, they have a paper A whereby they would have to use the written methods they do actually have a 45-minute paper B as well where the children have a calculator and obviously um, those type of questions wouldn't crop up in a paper B because obviously you encourage the children to use the calculator as much as you can. Uh, so that's really uh, the four main number of operations in a nutshell that, and the way that we teach them here at Hillside. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions for any of 
as teachers here at all. Hello. Is the that you use similar across the That's that, across the country, really. It's sort of where it's the national guidelines that all, all teachers follow. And like I say, for more detailed examples of all the methods that we've covered, like, are actually in your handout there. Um, what we have got here for you, uh, which your child's class teacher uh, will be able to give you, if you wish, before you leave, are a book booklet and trade down for reception children. It's again, it's a publication that's sort of uh, covered in Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, but not Foundation, foundation Stage. And these are government produced uh, booklets that um, enable parents to uh, support their children um, and give you an idea as to what um, appropriate attainment levels might be for your child in year one. Um, they do produce these for term one, term two, term three. And if you look at the types of examples that you would see in this booklet, um, you would get an idea as to the subjects and the topic areas that would, your child would be learning and covering in that particular term. Um, and there's a little tick sheet down the side um, for, that shows the targets that the teacher would be working on. Obviously, within each class, there are different children are working at different levels of ability, and these are very average general targets. Some children would be achieving higher than that, some children would be achieving um, at a lower ability than that. But it does give parents um, a rough guideline as to what uh, a child in that particular year group would be expected to do. This and for this term? For this term. Uh, there are useful activities for, that you could do with your child practically at home to help support us as a school in meeting those targets. So we've actually got the ones here for you tonight for the summer term, term three, for your particular uh, year group that your child is in. And when your child um, participates in our changeover day, uh, which takes place in July when my class uh, have their two days at high school and the children move up into the, they have a taste day with the teacher that they're going to be with next year. Your child will be leaving that day with the term one booklet this year for your child's subsequent year. So if your child's in year one now, when they've had their change over day, as well as coming home with tales of all the lovely things I'm sure they've done, they will, somewhere in their book bag or in their bag, there will be the targets for term one in the next year uh, that they're moving into. So that again, you can have a bit of an awareness.